Hey everyone and welcome back to New Zealand and guys we are going golfing so get your shoes on get your drivers dusted off and let's hit the fairways and I can also finally announce to you guys who our guest builder is and it is indeed none other than Marco Nock 19 so Marco Nock 19 builds some of the most amazing architectural designs that I've ever seen in the game and he's also an amazing asset creator and if you've been on the Steam Workshop you have no doubt run into some of his amazing works along the way and I was very flattered that he took up my offer to build here. So I asked him if he would make a modern and architectural designed sort of a golf club rooms and he yeah he said yes so I was wrapped. I had so much trouble trying to get these exported into the game. It came in two files with the PO file and the normal move it file but finally after a bit of graft and some hustling we got it done in the end and here it is put down. I've got to say too that I was very flattered that you guys commented thinking it may be City Watch, City Wall or $2.20. I mean that would be a dream of mine. But to think that you guys think I'm sort of on that level where they would potentially come and do a guest build. I, you know I guess I'm doing something right. But yeah um, I did ask $2.20 and he is far too busy. He has got way too much going on. That guy is absolutely crazy. He's nuts, ladies and gentlemen. And I didn't ask City Walk, but I know he's really busy with his work. And if he was going to come back, he could come back and do his own thing and just blow us all away. But I'm sure Marco Nock has taken a lot of time out of his schedule as well. Like I said, he makes some amazing assets and must spend a lot of time doing it. So, yes, very thankful. And guys, don't forget to check him out. I've got him linked in my description. But I'm sure most of you will already know who he is. So anyway, let's talk about what's going on here. It took me hours to get this all sort of plumbed in and working right. And some of the bits didn't export in as well as they should have. So I've had to touch it up. And <laughs> Marco Knox sent me through a couple of photos of it as well. So I used those as reference and touched up anything that needed it. But I've also had to extend this deck out here in order to plumb it into the golf course that I'm going to add on and I end up extending the deck massively towards the end of the episode as well so I use all of the same architecture and materials that Marco Nock has used in order to do that because I want to stay true to his masterpiece here and it really is a masterpiece it's got a beautiful modern look to it and it offsets what we build later in this episode just magnificently if I do say so myself so I use the grass network surfaces to make a slope down here towards where the first tee is going to be. I want this accessible for golf carts as well. And I guess that goes for the whole, the whole build here, the whole golf course and everything I do. I'm trying to make every part accessible and make it all make sense. I've played a little bit of golf. I know how it is when you turn up, where you have to go, what you have to do and how you make your way to the course. And I want it to all sort of make sense. So next is to chuck the road in and I make this half or semi-circle road here as a return area so if there's buses or shuttles turning up they can turn around here and also the road carries on a little bit and we'll see where that goes and what we get up to with that a little bit later on. So there's only one main road coming into this golf resort and I turn the end of it into a cul-de-sac. And then the access road to the golf resort just sort of comes off the end of the cul-de-sac. And the cul-de-sac is so that anybody that goes the wrong way has got an option to turn around. The whole time I was building this I was just thinking man this would be a massive Google Maps trap. There'd be so many tourists that would get led down this road and just end up doing a yui here. Oh it's a golf resort and going back the other way. So once I jiggled around with the shape of it a little bit and stretched it with the node controller, I got a pretty good placement here. I was pretty happy with this. So first port of call is to put a car park in. And I guess the main thing I was being vigilant with here was I wanted to leave enough room so that there was decent pedestrian access from here. Because people are obviously getting out with their own golf clubs and stuff like that. There needs to be good pathways into the main club rooms or over towards that area. 
other than a few bushes around the place and some fencing and all the most appropriate stuff you would see for a car park there's nothing really too special about this I mean at the end of the day it is just a car park a dirty dirty old car park I mean as long as we nail the most important things you know the rest of it doesn't really matter too much you could put whatever you want around this you know I gotta say it is great being able to use these signs now and put PO text on them without having your computer just burst into flames I don't know about you guys but I crashed so many times back before Simon Royer updated this and now I got PO signs everywhere including the golf course I create this sort of fancy looking sign as you come in here and tickled it up a little bit with some other props then we can whip back out the front and start detailing out there and I start with the main things which is just fences, the planters and some bushes. Then we move on to things like brick decals on the ground, some benches and little things like rubbish bins and the like. And one of the cool things about the entrance here is Marco Nock has used real paths that go in and around in where the shops are. And I've plumbed off these and gone out onto the deck and a few other places which you'll see later on. And I think that's so cool man, like not only has he made it look amazing but he's also made it functional which is just so cool. As you guys know I'm all about functionality, I don't see the point of building something if it doesn't work or move or do something. So this building and the way that Marco Nock has made it just makes things so much easier for me in the way that I build. So... Can you tell that I'm happy? Man, I'm so happy with them. I know I probably should rein it in somewhat. So, oh, anyway, I should mention that um, this golf course that we're building here is actually in place of a real golf course in New Zealand in the exact same location. The golf course is called Jack's Point. And, of course, I haven't built the golf course like for like. That would have been absolutely huge amounts of unnecessary work. But it is worth noting that yes, this is in place of a real golf course. So let's take a look at what Jack's Point looks like in real life. It is a beautiful golf course in some magazines and publications. It's been ranked within the top 10 most beautiful golf courses in the world. And I just couldn't not do this. It looks so picturesque out here on this peninsula. I didn't just want to fill it up with houses or shops like we've done with the rest of the city. Let's do something unique and a golf course was perfect. I didn't need to push it. That's what's there in real life. So it worked out perfectly. Anyway, you see me carry on with a concrete path here. Or this is the start of the concrete path that's going to run around the entire course. This path is going to give access to all of the holes. And speaking of the holes, I cut a whole lot of footage because... I couldn't decide on which golf assets to use, there's quite a few on the workshop and I tried these ones initially but they disappeared when you got them at a certain camera angle. Some of you will be familiar with that happening and it's a real pain. And the other ones I found needed really heavy modification with procedural objects and I just wasn't prepared to do that times 18 holes. I think that's absolutely crazy. So I've stuck with these initial ones that I went with and the good thing about these is they go up and over terrain if it's um, undulating and I do have some slight hills around the place. I think that's just going to make the golf course look a little bit more realistic and these ones do go up and over those which is great but because they're terrain conforming I can't PO them whatsoever. But nonetheless I think they look great. I mean what do you guys think of those? I think they look really really cool. I've laid all 18 holes out here so that they start at the club rooms and finish at the club rooms and it all sort of makes sense. I've put paths around, a few little ponds in here and there and I think this looks pretty cool. So the next thing I move on to is I wanted to make an old club rooms that had been here for sort of a hundred odd years and I chose this building here and modified it with procedural objects and my god this crashed my computer like three or four times trying to do this. It was very frustrating but the building was so perfect so I stuck at it and I got it down to this part here and I've done it in a couple of different areas and it just looks so perfect with the golf course I think. It really gives that, you know, this golf course has been here for a long long time vibe. 
and once I'd had that main building sitting where it needed to go I plumbed it in here putting a road through with a little dead end so traffic can return or this other road that comes off here and goes down to the waterfront which is going to house some small apartment slash resorts and believe me when I say the view from these resorts back across the bay is absolutely stunning these would be gorgeous to stay at and as for the detailing I try and stick to most of it being at the front of the main clubhouse here there's a little bit down towards the coast but most of it's just foliage down there but the main clubhouse was detailed pretty much as you'd imagine it would be nicely mowed lawns some flowers a really nice formal entrance I think this goes really well with the style of building that this club room is and when we look at this and later on Marco Knox creation as well it gives an outstanding contrast between you know maybe a hundred years worth of architecture it just looks so so good and it's really something that can only be achieved if I get someone else involved especially when they're on an elite level you know it really takes the build to another level and I've enjoyed this immensely So even though I'm following my own design, I still want to make this obviously as beautiful as I can and I wanted to make this really really slick looking lake just in front of both the clubhouses and I'm using a schist stone wall, I think it's from Lost Gecko to go around the edge of the lake and this is absolutely perfect because this schist stone that's in this wall is sourced locally here from Otago it's very popular down here in Queenstown so I snake that around and through some of these holes and make this last green here look pretty awesome and we make a bit of a gallery later on that can view all the action on that last hole and it's a little bit of a shame that these holes are a really bright color and it's very hard to change the color of them but I've tried my best to use grass and props pretty strategically here and there to try and sort of make them blend in a bit more. But I would love to see someone build a golf course out of the other asset that I tried, the PO one. If you mastered it, you could really make some outstanding golf holes, but man, it would be some serious work. So even though these are a little bit bright, they are still doing a job. They still look great. So one of the last things I do here on the golf course is I put a viewing deck on the front of Marco Knox Golf Resort and that's because this is only about 50 feet away from that last golf hole and this would make for great viewing and I do my best to copy the style that Marco Knox has used so the same materials again, the same pillars and everything it just looks like a straight extension of his building and I didn't want to modify his whatsoever so this has just been plopped on the front and now I got to this point in the video and I thought I'd made enough but the video was a little bit short so lucky you guys I dived back into the game and spent some time making this intersection and this is by far the most detailed and difficult intersection I've ever made in City Skylines let alone this series but I really wanted to challenge myself and see how far I could push my skills with the intersections and also how close could I get it to looking like an actual New Zealand intersection so no it's not this one you're looking at here it's coming up soon we do a massive interchange probably the biggest interchange above ground anyway in the city going into this intersection and I guess you could say I'm forecasting for this area to be somewhat populated in future and I'm just sick of roundabouts, they're everywhere in the city it was my initial thought but I fought that, I fought against it man and I'm going for this sort of design and it's just a pleasure doing these types of interchanges now with the likes of Node Controller and such I do really enjoy every opportunity I get to use them and to put in these sorts of interchanges and like you guys know if you've been following the series I've tried to fight this type of interchange in the city too much because 
we don't see a lot of it in New Zealand apart from maybe right in the middle of Auckland but hair seems so appropriate for this sort of style and I have followed a real life interchange here my brain is nowhere near capable of coming up with this type of intersection without some sort of aid and in this case it was good old Google Earth and when we take a look at this said intersection on Google Earth you guys can see exactly the challenge that I've set for myself here and it took me a good three hours to do this you know if I was maybe someone like Skibbeth I probably could have done this in about 15 minutes but yeah it's definitely not my strong point and at one point it felt like I had knots in my brain I wasn't sure what was going on I had to go and have a lie down I got the sweats yeah it was all really intimidating and but I stuck at it again and yeah it's come out all right actually I'm really really proud of this intersection I must say it's um it's all working I've had to put some temporary housing and stuff in to see if it works and yeah it's all working and the traffic's going where it needs to and for now nothing's jammed but we'll see when it's got a house maybe 5,000 people out here but for now it looks really pretty and that's probably enough for me at the moment I'm yeah like I say I'm really happy with it so I'll stick with that for now I want to say a massive thank you to Marco Knock 19 and remind you guys again to go and check him out. We have indeed come to the end of the episode. Thank you guys for watching. If you've watched it all the way through, you are a bloody legend. Take it easy, my friends, and I will see you on the next episode. Peace out.